Joe Reinagle, Jason Minix, The Blitz on 94.1 San Antonio Sports Star. It is The Blitz here on 94.1 San Antonio Sports Star. Joe Reinagle has the day off. He'll be back tomorrow. I'm Jason Minix. We all worked in the media on Saturday because of one guy, Victor. Michelle Beadle, from what I could tell, is the only one that has actually gotten to do a sit-down, one-on-one interview with the newest member of the San Antonio Spurs. So let's talk about it with Michelle Beadle as she joined us on the Buyers Barricades guest line. Before we get into the one-on-one, I've never seen the Spurs put on a production like that for a press conference. Have you? Quite the spectacle. I mean, they've had the they had the welcome thing for Duncan back in the day, the river part. But I, the whole press conference at the arena with the music and the videos, I, I've not seen that. That was a big one. It, it, again, lots of changes are coming with the arrival of Wemby, and I think we saw step one on at day one. And and you know, you and I were talking a little bit beforehand, and just like, all right, I'm not used to this. What's all going on here? But after <laughs> you go and you sit down and you do. A one-on-one. I haven't seen any of it yet, so you got to tell us about it. What What was Same. that like? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's um, we we're getting him. I mean, I'll give him this credit. Like he has been on a whirlwind tour of sort of talking and having to kind of be on and just flying around and doing. And we're getting him on the tail end of that. And even though you could sort of tell that you know he's exhausted, he's very professional, very polite. Um, it, he's he's a, got a, such a good demeanor about him that if that is truly how this thing plays out and that is who he is, I mean, I think he's just set up so nicely to handle what is clearly going to be a very long and hot spotlit season for him. So it, it's, it's interesting to be 19 and be that cool, calm and collected. Mature beyond his years. And I don't know if you got into the dinner he had, but I heard Sean Elliott <laughs> say that, you know, he asked all the right questions and it just seems like at 19, And if you remember your life at 19, I think about mine at 19, uh, he just seems so far ahead to even know what the right questions are to ask. Yeah, I think he found himself sitting at a table. I mean, being a a kid growing up in France um, and knowing Boris Diaw, knowing Tony Parker and, and sort of looking up to them, the Spurs connection being obvious. I think he found himself in one of those wow arrival moments. Um, and it didn't seem to intimidate him, which I think is great. But I also think there's such a cool family quality to what the Spurs have here. The fact that these guys are all still around, that they're willing, they're available to have dinner and, and kind of sit down and embrace the new generation. It, it's awesome. I mean, his family was there. They were at the, at the table next to them. I think Pop spent time talking to the family as well. So they are being welcomed with giant, open, warm arms. Um, and I think that's what he needs because let's be honest, he, he, he's a teenager. His whole life just changed. You got to get settled now in a new city. And I think he's in the best case scenario for exactly that. Michelle Beadle joining us here on The Blitz. She had a, a great sit down uh, with uh, Victor following the uh, press conference. Anything in that in that interview that you could tell us about that maybe you learned that you haven't heard over the last week or so of interviews that he's been doing well he's nervous that he's not going to be able to find any good baguettes and croissants uh <laughs> <laughs> i told him i was like you might not i mean look i'll eat a baguette from h-e-b uh, they're delicious put them in the oven for a second but i also understand where he's coming from it's, it's a different world altogether um but i, I think he's excited i think he's really just excited to get settled even when we were sort of wrapping things up because we're like well, what do you do now you know the, all the nike athletes have to head up to portland for a little while um, with the announcement today that he will not be playing for the French team, I think that buys him a little bit of a less of a workload. I'm not going to say rest. I don't think there's any rest in his near future, but um, at least he can have one more thing that's just sort of off the table. And yeah, you know, th- think about what it's like to move to a new city. Now think about doing that as a kid. I, I to me, it's well, a hell of an endeavor. Uh, new city <laughs> and more. new and new country for the, for that matter. Yeah. I mean, everything, everything. is is yeah. is going to be insane. I'm curious. I mean, I think about your career, Michelle, all the superstars that that you've worked with and or talked to uh, throughout your career. The Spurs have not had a player with that kind of star level. I mean, Tim was there, but Tim did not want that kind of spotlight. Victor (laughs) is very comfortable in that spotlight. And I was saying earlier in the show, that's normal for him. It's not overwhelming for him. 
But from the Spurs side of things, what is the biggest adjustment you think the team, the franchise is going to have to make in dealing with uh, having a player of his uh, star power? I mean, I think that is sort of something maybe that people don't realize. It's one thing for Wemby to come here and, and acclimate and figure out who he is in this league, but the Spurs are so used to doing it a, a certain way, the Spurs way. I mean, you guys, you and I have been around long enough. We, we've dealt with the team long enough. They, uh, they are very good at sort of insulating themselves to the outside world and, and keeping the players in. And, and the thing about that is this is a new world from when Tim Duncan was the star. It is social media driven. These kids all have their branding and their identities. They're all very comfortable in front of cameras. I mean, some go out of their way to find themselves in front of a camera. So I will be curious to see who does more adapting. Do they adapt more to him or is he going to have to adapt more to them? I hope they find a middle ground uh, because I think there's value in allowing, especially all the young, I mean, the whole team's young, for goodness sake, letting them just be. Because I'm not saying they need to be, you know, Grady Dick with the ridiculous TikTok accounts, but somewhere in the middle, <laughs> I think it's fun for everybody. And, and I hope, I hope we get to see a little bit of that. Michelle Beadle joining us here on the blitz. So any word on when this one-on-one -on -one is going to air, where it's going to air? No, I have no idea. I haven't seen it either. I mean, <laughs> so I don't know if I, I'm sure as soon as they let me or I, I have it, I will, uh, I will post it, but I've not seen it at all. So who knows? I'm just amazed. Um, you know, we've all seen, he walked by us. So we, I've just never been around a person that tall. I mean, Boban is a large, tall person. This is just a different human. Right. Uh, and it, it's kind of crazy to see up close and personal, finally. Follow me here a, a, a second, because I'm trying to figure out the right way to frame this. Like, I remember doing <laughs> an interview with Boban at the Spurs practice facility, and Boban was kind enough to say, let's sit down. And so we were sitting <laughs> on the floor uh, leaning right. up against the wall, and Tom Warsborn of the Express News took a picture, and I look like a an eight-year-old sitting next to him, right? <laughs> and and I think awesome. size-wise, Boban might actually technically, you know, from the, he just seems like the tallest person I've ever been around. Do you think it's because he's so yeah. thin that makes him appear taller? I think so. I think there's some, a, a little optical illusion going on um, because he's just, when he was like, you, you were set up at the beginning, at the end. And when he walked in from where I was sitting, it was crazy that he was a good foot above. And his entire family is tall. I don't yeah. think anyone's under six one in his family. And he's still a head, an entire head above everybody at minimum. So it's just the crazy existence he must lead. Um, and yeah, he just appears taller to me than even. Because I'm with you. I've, I've stood next to Boban a few times. And he's the largest person maybe other than Shaq. But Shaq's just a giant person that I've ever been near. And Wemby just feels taller and, and than that. And it, it's a crazy thing to see. Although when I see the photos that you posted on your social media accounts, aside from knowing the gun show that you've got going on, <laughs> uh, you, you know, I say, were you in a higher chair than him? The, the height doesn't seem in those, in those seated pictures, like I was expecting them to be. No, I, I don't know how they did it. Cause the chairs, I thought they were the same. Like they don't, you know, we didn't have like crazy measured out different chairs. Um, I have no idea if it's the way that the angle shot or maybe mine's closer somehow, because yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, this does not do it justice. Um, and you can kind of see the scale, like how long his arm is. Like oh, people yeah. are making jokes about, shoot my chair back 20 more feet and still be fine. Oh, are, you, are you kidding? Um, it looks like he's tickling your elbow as you're shaking hands. <laughs> I know. And by the way, for the record, I do not have small dainty hands. I have man hands and they look so cute and tiny. When he's shaking my hand, I'm like, oh, that's nice. We'll take that. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, he, it's going to be fun. This is going to be a fun season. Like, it's just going to be. I had fun watching last year just because I liked the guys. I think this is going to be a crazy on a whole new level. Well, and, and, and let's go there because I know, I, I believe you're still going to do a lot of stuff with Spurs Television. With you, I never sh I'm never. Yeah. i not really sure where I'm going to find you <laughs> on what different platforms doing doing something big, but it's always, always that way. But I mean, this team, you've been a Spurs fan your whole life. And so I yeah. know when you get to actually work and do games for you, it's just a thrill. But now you, after all the crap we all went through last year to get <laughs> Wemby, the future is so bright now. I, I can only imagine. So what's, you know, put the NBA analyst hat on what's next. What's realistic expectation wise for Wemby and the Spurs this year. 
I think I think that's the big thing, right? Is what's realistic. Clearly, when when the envelope was tipped, when he was officially announced, it there was a realization that the new chapter has begun. But realistically, like, what are we looking at? I mean, we're a twenty-something win team. Like, it's it's not going to jump to sixty, um, and that's fine. I think it's more of a. And Spurs fans are great about this, by the way, because not a lot of fan bases sometimes get it. It's a process. Um, the the big big giant piece is here. And so now it begins the building process and putting pieces around him and letting these guys sort of gel and learn to play together because we have the blessing of everyone being so dang young. That's a good thing. Um, And I think we should just, you know, I think they'll probably manage him carefully. Uh, Obviously you don't want to, you don't want to rush anything. You know, I mean, we, we're all used to watching the Spurs games, we know. And so I think, I don't know if if they were to win 38, 40, that would be a miracle to me. I'd be shocked because it's, it's, the rest of the league is as excited as we are. They now have a huge target on Wimby's back because say what you want, but this is an ego driven league. And this guy is coming in with a whole lot of hype. And I don't think other guys like to see that. So it's going to be, he's going to get the best of every single guy they face on any given night. Um, it's going to be a quick learning process. And I, I think he's probably pretty excited to do it. Uh, and I also hope he's equipped for what is now going to become the hate cycle because on this end, he's getting nothing but love. But everywhere else, it's going to start. You know, they already started with posting a video of him missing shots yeah. and like trolling. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of that. So I hope he's ready for that. But he seems to be surrounded by really good, close family and friends. That I'm not too worried. Well, and and again, I think because he's grown up playing pro ball as a teenager, playing against men and high into social media, it's normal for him. He he knows how to read the comments or when not to look at all the comments <laughs> and and deal with it. Yeah. Right? It's it, it's unlike. You know, some some you know can get lost in that, and others just know how to tune it out. And I think this generation, they know when or when not to go read all the comments. Yeah, you know how you're wired. I mean, some people, Kevin Durant, like he <laughs> loves to to just dip into the cesspool and engage, and that's cool because that's that's what he likes. But others just don't even bother reading it. I don't know what kind of guy Wimby is yet. He strikes me as a guy who probably doesn't sweat the uh, the haters too much, uh, but we, we shall see. And so, yeah, you're right. The young guys have figured this thing out. They 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 don't know life without it, um, and they know it better than we do. So it, I'll be curious uh, to see how he and and what we get to see and what we don't. Well, I, I believe that's the only kind of long form one on one interview anybody's really done, especially locally here with Wimby. I know draft night, all the TV stations got one question oh, God, with yeah. them. So you you've got. You've got the one-on-one, and it, it's sitting in in the closet somewhere. So whenever <laughs> whenever they decide to put it out, make sure you not that you need to let us know because I have a feeling anything Wemby is going to go viral immediately. But I can't wait to see it. I know I've never seen anything like that. He is. I knew it would be a big deal. I think this is going to be even a bigger deal than than I probably realized. It's going to be so much fun to watch. It's going to be a fun year. Great seeing you on Saturday. Absolutely, I know. It was like we were all there. It's like everybody we haven't seen. But I haven't seen some. I've seen Don here. I've seen a lot of these guys in a long time. That was fun. You know, well, you know, I hate to say it this way, but the Spurs matter again. It was a reunion. <laughs> it was a reunion, and it, did you notice there was just sort of a brightness in the air? Like it was like, like, like all back from school and a great summer, and here we go. It felt, uh, it felt hopeful, and I, I kind of enjoyed it. it. Well, and you say hopeful. There hasn't been that much media at a Spurs event since the 2014 Finals. Dang, that's a long. By the way, we're so spoiled. We're like, that's so long ago. It was so long ago. <laughs> it was though. It was. It's been too long. It, it's time to be back in the uh, back on the NBA radar. And I and I think we're there now. I think we're there. I mean, if you got Marty Smith looking like a clown, I think we're back. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, we're going to have Marty on the show tomorrow to give him yes. crap about that wardrobe that he was wearing here in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, tell him. Please, not, I have never worn that outfit. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I never, never, never. Michelle, never. always great catching up. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, Jason. The great Michelle Beadle joining us here on the Blitz on the Buyers Barricades guest line. Buyers Barricades provides traffic control, rental, and sales for San Antonio and beyond online at buyersbarricades.com. Yeah, big show tomorrow. Not only do we have Marty Smith on, what time pledge? 2.30? We're also going to have Troy Aikman tomorrow. Yeah, Troy Aikman. The reason Ryan Eagle's coming back from vacation. 
Troy on the Blitz tomorrow.